Well, welcome, ladies and gents. So, box office bust. Black Adam faces theatrical losses. Probably looking like it's going to lose about $100 million. So, it's quite a lot, actually. Um, this is one of those interesting films that, you know, people were counting it out before it had released in all markets. Uh, it then, obviously, since released in all markets. And, yeah, you know, it's probably going to be a, a, a fairly large loss. Um, I doubt this will get a sequel. Not in terms of a standalone movie, but maybe something that they sort of package together as another product for DC. But it's interesting nonetheless, and this is a great article by Variety, which goes a long way to validate some of the comments uh, that have been out there with respect to Black Panther Wakanda Forever's break-even point being, you know, as high as it is, basically that sort of uh, 750 million mark. Because a load of people are like, oh, it's crossed 700 million, that's it, it's success. And it's the same kind of element here is that, you know, if you don't know how it's sort of calculated, you would be, I guess, duped into believing that those, you know, are great successes. But yeah, unfortunately, this is why budgets have to come down because they're just insane. So let's take a look at this, right? Uh, Black Adam. They say hardly been given a hero's welcome in its box office run, generating about 400 million globally after seven weeks on the big screen. So yeah, seven weeks, 400 million dollars, not good. Um, that's not good at all. And I like this film, but that's still not good. Now, Variety notes that may seem like a lot of coinage, especially in COVID times, where movies of all shapes and sizes are struggling to reach pre-pandemic grosses at the box office. It's not the case. Good movies generally have been making, you know, pretty decent money. And obviously it's not the rule, but yeah. I would say Black Adam uh, with, you know, Dwayne Johnson, a villain, blah, blah, blah. Changed the hierarchy of power in Warner Brothers DC Universe. Uh, didn't come cheap. So it cost uh, about $200 million to produce, which is large. And then, uh, and then about $100 million for marketing. And that's according to knowledgeable individuals. It didn't have loads of trailers and loads of TV spots or anything like that. But it's still $100 million. So it's a lot. Like, that's a lot of money. Uh, a fairly large sum of money. Now, they say insiders at Warner Brothers push back saying that COVID-related box office limitations led the studio to scale back the global advertising campaign to $80 million, which is true, you know, it could be the case. Um, but they say here, you know, the result is the film needed to earn around $600 million worldwide to break even. And even more, obviously, to then start to turn a profit. Uh, and that's according to sources familiar with the financials of the film itself. So remember, ladies and gents, they sound like good numbers. Again, even going back to Black Panther Wakanda Forever... You know, $700 million sounds good. Still not broken even yet. Now, Black Panther Wakanda Forever won't lose money, FYI. But will it be a success? No. And the same, this is a bomb, right? This is a bomb, unfortunately. Now, they say here, you know, box office experts believe Black Adam will stall out with less than $400 million globally. Uh, I, would, I, I did honestly think Japan would give it a big boost, but it didn't. Um, now, they say here, you know, it's problematic. Since movie theatre owners get to keep around half of those sales. It's about 40%. Uh, now, the movie stands to lose 50 to $100 million in its theatrical run. According to the estimates of insiders. As well as rival executives with knowledge of similar productions. Sources at Warner Brothers dispute those numbers. Of course they will. Saying that the movie will break even at $400 million. I mean, that's just patently not true. Uh, when the film was commissioned... The break-even was believed to be $450 million, but that figure has dropped given the particularities of the new home entertainment landscape, one in which Black Adam has overperformed projections. So that is kind of one thing to consider, is that it was like top of the iTunes charts. It did really well there. Uh, but still, $450 million to break-even? What? No. It's not true. Again, patently not true. Now they say here, thanks to uh, pandemic era concessions, films hit home entertainment platforms in 33 days rather than 25, which reduces the money needed to revive marketing campaigns for a digital launch. So they keep the marketing budgets a little bit lower as a result. 
uh, with ancillary revenues sources at Warner Brothers say that the film is poised to get into the black. I mean, I I don't know. You know, I like this film. People have said I showed for this film, but even I don't think that's the case. I, I don't. I just I can't see that being the case. Um, uh, in any case, Black Adam isn't the financial winner that DC had hoped for. No, but then this is the problem is loads of people still think that the, uh, you know, the, they think that there is still such a thing as the movie star. And if there ever was one, you know, that movie star would be uh, Dwayne Johnson. You'd think that he would be able to do it, but he just, he's not. He's not been able to do it. Um, the era of the movie star is over. Completely done and dusted. Um, massively so. But then as well, this is a film that they've been banging on about for ages. It had to be exceptional. And it wasn't that. It was fine. You know, it was it was a good, dumb, fun movie. But it wasn't exceptional. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so, yeah, surprising. Surprising. But they say here, you know, box office returns dictate those downstream terms. Even with premium video on demand, which could bring in an additional 25 to 35 million, Black Adam isn't looking like it will get out of the red by the time it lands on HBO Max. To be fair, most movies lose money during their theatrical uh, release and depend on rentals, sales and consumer product sales to turn a profit. So this is the thing. Again, Black Panther's not a success yet. Uh, but they do comment here, they say, you know, uh, and it's not just Black Adam that struggled greatly to earn back its budget in pandemic times. Disney's Strange World and Pixar's Lightyear, um, you know, their film, uh, Strange World's a bomb, Lightyear's not been very good, uh, Amsterdam's not been very good, uh, Moonfall, all of these things, not good. Pretty huge bombs, uh, in fairness. Pretty huge bombs. Um, not, uh, not the success that these... Studios hoped they would be uh, at all, in fact. So it's interesting, you know, they start to then compare it to other films here and there, but it's not really relevant, in fairness, to discuss that uh, here anyway. Now they say here Marvel has long been operating in another stratosphere, but the turnout for Black Panther 2 compared to Black Adam only illuminated the discrepancy in interest among moviegoers. Wakanda Forever earned almost as much as the uh, at the global box office in three days as Black Adam generated in four weeks in theatres. But they're being pretty disingenuous here because they're not owning up to the fact that that's still not turned a profit either uh, or even broken even. So uh, it, it is a little bit frustrating. But there you have it, ladies and gents. It is a bomb. It is interesting that this has bombed so much. But it goes, again, hopefully it goes some way to explain you know, just why they need to downsize these budgets and why streaming will never be the replacement. <laughs>